2020 was an unusual year. We learned to wear masks, not to shake hands, and to work remotely. But hopefully, it wasn't all bad. Hello, I'm Ivan from the CS card team, and in this video I'm going to tell you how we tried to make this year a little better, by hopefully providing a better product. This video report is unusual because it will cover not only CS card and multi-vendor, but also our marketplace for add-ons and themes, as well as technical support. Even when covering development, I won't go into too much detail, because describing a whole year worth of work could easily turn a video into an hour-long one, and nobody wants that. With that out of the way, let's get to the improvements that we made, and how they were supposed to make your life better. The first improvement is product creation. Now when you create a product and find that your store doesn't have an option or feature that the product needs, you no longer have to leave the product page. You can simply create a product feature or product option on the fly from the product editing page. Product variations or products with different colors, sizes, etc. are also easier to create. You simply select what features will be used for variations, choose their variants, and the system will automatically create all the products that you need. It will be much easier than going through the entire list of possible combinations and selecting which ones you need. It'll also improve performance. In 2020, we also reworked the list of orders, categories, countries, users, and vendors in multivendor. We used the product list as an example, where you can select multiple items and the context menus appear. These menus show what actions you can take on the selected entities. It's much more intuitive than looking for the gear button somewhere in the upper right corner of the page, and it's also more convenient on mobile devices. Another improvement is how the shipping rates are now configured. You can now decide in what regions a shipping method is available, and you can also set the base rate for that region. You also can exclude certain regions even from real-time shipping methods. So, for example, you can forbid using a shipping method in a certain country. You now also have more control over which members of your staff receive what kind of email notifications and notifications in the admin panel. You can make certain notifications available to user groups, specific staff members, or specific email addresses. For example, if you use an alias for multiple members of your staff. Another important change concerns the files that you can attach to products such as user manuals, etc. Previously, those files were always stored on the same server as your store. But now, you can store them as links to some external storage. That way, you'll save up space on your server. We've also added the ability to reuse the same file for multiple products without creating a copy. That will save the space even further. And the last but not least, We've added the ability to import attachments via product import, which is something that was lacking before. Previously, you had to add attachments manually for each product. Since we started to talk about files, we've also added a new profile field with the file type. It allows your customers to upload files, for example, specific documents that you might need them to upload. This is especially useful for B2B scenarios and marketplaces. Another small improvement that's worth mentioning is search engine optimization. Now, CSCart and Multivendor treat the main language differently from the others, if you display languages in URLs. Previously, the main language was displayed in the URL too, but now only additional languages will be displayed. You can look at the example here. It is supposed to help with search engine optimization of your site. We've also added the ability to rearrange page structure directly from the storefront. Previously, it was only available on the checkout page, but now it is also available on the homepage as well as product and category pages. 
Even if you don't make use of this functionality, you might still find it useful for going to the settings of a specific block from the storefront using the gear icon. Another interesting change is the introduction of the help section in the admin panel. The help section will help new users find the relevant documentation for each page. There is that question mark icon in the upper right part of the page. By clicking it, you'll find various articles from the documentation as well as videos. The cool thing about it is that we can update the content of the help section on the fly. So if we write a new article in between releases, it will still appear in the help section. Another important change affects product filters and how customers interact with them. First of all, we made it so that the selected filters don't go to the top of the list and you also have some time to select multiple variants before the filters get applied. This makes interacting with filters a lot smoother than before and it's easier to select multiple filters. And thanks to a few performance improvements, filters are also faster. Speaking of performance, we've improved the load time of product pages as well. The next set of improvements deals specifically with Multivendor, our solution for marketplaces. We've dedicated quite some time to it because we've also been developing our own marketplace for add-ons and themes, which I will bring up later. The first improvement is how multi-vendor handles debtors. We've replaced the old vendor debt payout add-on with a new add-on called vendor to admin payments. The new add-on is much easier to configure and you can see in the settings how everything goes, like when to suspend vendors, what happens to the suspended vendors and what notifications they get. You can also set different rules for different vendor plans on when to suspend vendors. This is useful if you have specific vendors which need their own special treatment. The add-on also makes finding debtors easier. Previously, you didn't see debtors on the vendor list, but now being a debtor is tied to a special status called suspended, and now you can easily see which vendors are suspended and which are not. Vendors themselves benefit from notifications that inform them about their debt and what might happen if they don't pay it. They can also refill balance in advance now and not only when they become debtors. It makes the marketplace experience better and allows you to avoid suspension of vendors if they pay in advance. Another way to make the lives of vendors easier is by simplifying product import. Previously, every vendor had to create their own import preset, or you had to help those vendors make that preset. But now you can set up a preset once, and all vendors will be able to use it if you choose so. That way, if you have some file structures that many of your vendors use, They'll be able to just upload the file, click import, and that would be it. In 2020, we also added communication between marketplace administrators and vendors. For example, a vendor can contact marketplace administrator from the page of a specific import preset or order. This will allow both parties to understand the context of the conversation. To make the lives of vendors even easier, we added a bottom toolbar for vendors who have signed in to your marketplace on the storefront. Now they'll know that the real work about products and orders is done in the vendor's admin panel. Now it's much easier to get started. We're planning to simplify the admin panel even further so that it would be easier for vendors to use. You can also give vendors more power if you want. For example, the Vendor Privileges add-on from Multivendor Plus and Ultimate now allows you to determine whether vendors can create and edit orders or manage return requests. The settings of a call requests add-on determine if vendors can work with call requests. 
The decision whether or not to allow vendors to create their own product features is left in settings vendors. The next improvement for multi-vendor is PayPal Commerce Platform. It is a new solution which is meant to replace PayPal adaptive payments. It works like this. Vendors connect their accounts and the money from orders is distributed automatically between them and the marketplace. Of course, to make the distribution work, orders must be paid for via the payment method introduced by the add-on. Another improvement concerns Multivendor Plus and Ultimate. There is a new add-on called Vendor Rating and it allows you to set your own formula of how the rating is calculated. Once you do that, customers will be able to sort vendors by their rating. The add-on helps you encourage their correct behavior from vendors. For example, you can incentivize vendors to apply for a certain vendor plan, have a specific number of products, have a high review score, or make sure that there are as few return requests as possible. Storefronts in Multivendor Ultimate also received improvements throughout the year. For example, some settings and add-on settings can now have different values depending on the storefront. Like in the screenshot, when you can specify different weight measurement units depending on the storefront. We've also improved storefront selector and made sure that dashboards return correct information depending on the selected storefront. If you have Multivendor Ultimate but don't want to use storefronts, we've introduced the Payments by Country add-on, which allows you to determine which payment method will be available and in what country. That way, you can have a single storefront but still tailor it for different countries. In 2020, we also worked on our mobile application for marketplaces. We introduced a mobile app for vendors that allowed them to check their products and orders, as well as create new products easier than ever, perhaps even easier than in the admin panel. As you can see, the steps are pretty simple. We also improved the looks of the categories list. Previously, a category without an image had a placeholder, but now categories with and without images look much better. We also added the rating of products, which is now displayed on product lists. There were a few other improvements as well. For example, we added the support of two important add-ons, direct customer to vendor payments and product variations. We also added the ability for you to edit the texts of your mobile application in the admin panel of your marketplace. And at the end of the year, we focused on updating our mobile application to React Native 063 and also on improving its looks. Here are the designs that we came up with when working on the mobile application. The main change is that the menu now isn't hidden in the sidebar, but rather is displayed at the bottom of the page as most modern applications do. And that concludes the changes that the development team has done. But in this report, we are also covering some other aspects of CS Card. For example, our marketplace for add-ons and themes. In 2020, we redesigned the marketplace by installing a new theme called Generation Z. We also changed the catalog structure and filters. The goal here was to make it easier for you to navigate the marketplace and find the add-ons and themes that you need for your business. But the main change of 2020 is the ability for you to buy add-ons and themes directly from the marketplace without going to the developer's website. Both developers and customers benefit from that. Because developers no longer need a site to sell their add-ons, more developers may be able to join the marketplace and offer their products. They can also benefit from the tools that the marketplace provides, such as Upgrade Builder, Anti-Piracy Protection, and Licensing System. Customers benefit too, firstly, because they no longer have to go to each of the developer's websites individually and all the orders are in one place. 
And secondly, when you buy a product from the marketplace, it always remains available to you. So it's an extra place where you can download the product. It is also a step towards the bright future where add-ons could possibly be installed directly from the admin panel of CS Card by integrating it with the marketplace. The last but not least of what I'd like to cover is technical support and how we seek to improve it so we could call it customer care. When someone has a problem, the last thing they want to hear is that they need to buy support credits or that there are too many requests at the moment and that they have to wait. Things like that ruin experience. And our goal with the support is to provide better experience through better service and hopefully ending up with a better product in the process. Here are the basics of good support. Replies should come as soon as possible. The support specialist should seek to understand the problem, know how to solve it, and know the ecosystem of a product. Like, for example, being able to suggest an add-on that solves a problem that the client faces. The support should also be transparent and inform clients about all the actions that are being taken, how long those actions would take, and so on. To make sure that we are on the right track, we'll have all sorts of metrics, like how you rate the tickets, how long it takes us to get back to you, or how often we have to say that we are currently busy and ask you to wait. Those are just a few of the metrics, but they are some of the most important ones. There's also a metric that isn't directly related to support, but is related to the product as a whole how likely that is that you would recommend CS Card. That metric is here because technical support specialists have the power to improve the product. This photo is from one of our pre-COVID meetings, where developers regularly demonstrate what has been done to the product and what improvements they made. Technical support are also present during those meetings and can provide feedback as to what customers really want because they communicate with clients and look into their requests and problems and have an understanding of what the majority of our clients want. There are also other things we are doing to improve technical support. For example, support subscription will allow us to avoid the situation when we have to ask clients to buy credits before we can offer help. We are also introducing different subscription plans. One of those plans includes online chat where you can ask simple questions about CS card functionality and receive answers right away. More complicated questions take longer time to answer, so our staff will be moving them to help desk. Ideally, we want the support to become the go-to place for everything. So, if you have a question about CS card or multi-vendor, if you run into a problem, or if you have an improvement suggestion, technical support should be the place to go, because they have the knowledge of a product, the ability to help you in your own store or marketplace, and they can also forward your improvement suggestions to developers. The video report is coming to a close now, so here is a brief summary of what we've done in 2020. We worked on simplifying the admin panel for admins and vendors, tried to maintain performance and even increase it while adding new functionality, and also continued the development of mobile application. As far as marketplace is concerned, we worked towards establishing a proper ecosystem so that both third-party developers and our clients would benefit from it. As for technical support, we tried to improve user experience, both in terms of interaction with technical support and interaction with the actual product. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video report. If you like it, and if you'd like to see more of those, do let us know in the comments. This was Ivan from the CS Card team, and see you next time.